true crime reporting. The most important thing when reporting on true crime is to have journalistic integrity and to always remember the victim of the crime. Today, we're going to take a look back on the Jamie Kloss case out of Wisconsin. And we're going to take a look at where Jake Patterson for kidnapper is today. And we're also going to take a look at where Jamie Kloss is today and how Jamie Kloss is getting along in life. So first, let's start off with Jake Patterson. Jake Patterson, who is he? Why did he do it? And, and where is he today? And does anybody really care? So Jake Patterson, at the time of these events, when he before he kidnapped Jamie Kloss, Jake Patterson was a failed individual. Someone who kept to himself, but he had failed miserably at just about everything he had ever tried. Case in point, when Jake Patterson was 18 years old, he had initially signed up and was recruited by the United States Marine Corps. He was shipped off to San Diego and he failed out of basic training at week five of the training there at the MCRD Training Center in San Diego. His actual discharge does not actually say the reason for his actual discharge. He was given a discharge from the Marine Corps training and all it says is unclassified and no mentioning on his actual discharge. Doesn't say honorable, doesn't say dishonorable, just says no mentioning, which means he basically failed out of the Marine Corps basic training. So after that, he moved back to Wisconsin held uh, a couple of uh, odd jobs here and there, but never really kept to his actual you know, um, employment for any length of time. He moved into a home that his, uh, you know, was family, other family members, there were quite a few family members who have lived there over the years, but the last one was his father and his brother and mother who lived there temporarily in this home. Jake decided to take over the lease in this residency in the middle of nowhere Ville, um, miles and miles and miles from his nearest friend and yes Jake Patterson actually had friends even though he was you know considered a recluse quiet and kind of an odd individual he kept this place because well it, it was something for him to do and he was able to pay for it on the salary of working at a cheese factory yes he was a day laborer when he started at the cheese factory and he worked himself into a full-time position uh, working on the assembly processing line actually shrink wrapping huge blocks of cheddar cheese but jake was an odd fellow an odd individual who just didn't quite fit in anywhere in society and a lot of people you know who were in his inner circle family members particularly were worried about jake and where jake was going in life they couldn't seem to get Jake to, you know, want to take part in any family activities. Well, leading up to his actual kidnapping of Jamie Claus, for several weeks after he had initially spotted Jamie Claus getting onto a school bus, he had tried, at least by his own admission and in his own confession, two separate times to try to kidnap Jamie Claus. But for some reason, you know, one reason or another, he decided not to actually go through it that on the actual particular days when he was ready for it. Up to the day when he, you know, would finally uh, act upon his actual, you know, desires to kidnap and take Jamie Kloss for himself, he had gone out and purchased ammunition for his shotgun, and he had also gone out and bought a black ski mask and duct tape, which, you know, it, it going through a checkout line must have been a really interesting, you know, um, a bunch of items. He purchased a black ski mask, shotgun shells, duct tape, zip ties, all in one purchase. Ladies and gentlemen, if that doesn't set off red flags to a clerk into a store, I don't know what would. But anyways, on this particular day, a little bit after midnight, Jake Patterson walked up to the front door of the home and tried to kick the front door in after he realized that the door was locked. There was no turning back for Jake on that day. Jake finally was able to force the front door open. He was soon confronted by Jamie Kloss's father, who he then 
unfortunately, pull, you know, raised the shotgun and shot not once but twice at close range, killing him almost instantly right there in the foyer area of the front door. Jamie Kloss's mother grabbed Jamie and they went and they hid in the bathroom. Well, unfortunately, Jamie's mom never made it out of that bathroom alive. He then took Jamie, tied her up with zip ties, duct tape, and gagged her and put her in the trunk of his car and drove off. All of this, from the time that Jamie Kloss's mother initially called 911, she never said anything, she just dialed it. From the moment that she actually dialed that number to the point where he drove off with Jamie, took less than four minutes. Four minutes, ladies and gentlemen. From the time of the call to the time the officers arrived, four minutes. Well, he grabbed Jamie, drove her back to his place, and hid her underneath the bed. And he kept her there for 87 days. For 87 days that Jamie Kloss was underneath that bed, according to his own statement, he fantasized every day about sexually assaulting her and doing the most graphic, disgusting things to Jamie. But he says he never acted on it because he felt guilty about killing both of her parents. But he kept her underneath that bed for 87 days. During and on the 83rd or 84th day that he had Jamie Kloss there, he finally decided to let her out from underneath the bed and let her walk around in the backyard. Snow-covered grass in the backyard, Jamie was able to come out from underneath the bed. And there, he finally decided to, you know, to bring her out and you know, walk her around in the backyard, but at close range, never letting her too far away from his reach. He brought her back into the house, sat her down at the dining room table, and actually ate dinner with her on the 83rd or 84th day. Then, right back underneath the bed, she went. Jamie was there, barricaded in with heavy objects and weights, you know, in baskets and stuff like that. They were blocking all around the bed so she couldn't get out. But she would decide eventually to make a break for it to finally make her escape it, with or without a coat or shoes or anything she had to get out so she did eventually on the 87th day during the time that Jake Patterson had Jamie Claus there underneath his bed he had several family members who'd come by particularly his own father would come by for a visit and every time somebody would come by he would put the radio on in the bedroom to muffle any kind of sound that Jamie may have made. And he, he told her, don't make a noise. Don't do anything to alert that you know, the, your presence is here. If you do, I'll kill you. He told her this every single day for the entire time, from the moment he put her in that trunk and brought her into the house until that, that day when she finally decided and got up enough courage to get out. She did. She did it. She stayed quiet. She, when she finally made her escape, she ran. She ran as far as she could in the snow with no shoes, no coat, freezing at that time with you know, over a foot and a half of snow on the ground. She ran until she found somebody. But on that particular day, Jake Patterson's biggest mistake was he told her that he was going to town for groceries and other things and he would be back. But Jake had also forgotten to tell her on this particular day. He had finally made the decision. He was going to have his way with her. Because the items that he had picked up at the store and was in process of driving back to the home, two of those items were personal lube along with condoms. These are items that Jake Patterson purchased at the store. According to statements from the Pick a Pop and Tom Thumb store, where Jake Patterson had stopped on his second stop on top of the IGA store where he had gone. Jamie Kloss, she ran, freezing, scared for her life, looking over her shoulder constantly to make sure that Jake wasn't following her, that she didn't see Jake in his car coming down the road. Frightened, she ran until she 
she saw a lady walking her dog and she ran up to her and she said I need help and the lady looking at her quickly realized oh my god you're Jamie Claus we've all been looking for you we've been looking for you everywhere in this state I know exactly and they took her back to her house put a blanket around her warmed her up made her a cup of cocoa and called the authorities and said look I just found Jamie Claus she's here with me Jamie Claus was rescued that day and her story begins that day the day that Jamie Claus came up with the courage herself to, to act on her own to be the next thing to be the answer she was her own rescue she was going to run if it may, meant she had to run a hundred miles she was going to run she was going to survive she was going to be her own hero in this case so Jake Patterson convicted of the two murders was originally sent to Dodge Correction Center where he would spend a short amount of time but because of harassment and the the all the other inmates knew exactly who he was they several threats of death you know had and ha physical harm had come to him two inmates had actually tried at Dodge Correction Center to get at Jake in protective custody well the Dodge Correction Center in the state of Wisconsin acted quickly and they had to they had to get Jake out of that actual prison so they went on to the prison network and they saw that there was availability at two different prisons one was San Quentin in California the second prison that had availability was in New Mexico New Mexico State Penitentiary New Mexico State Penitentiary was able to take Jake and the compensation per day was far less than San Quentin so off to New Mexico State Penitentiary you will go Jake Patterson shortly after arriving Jake Patterson again would have several run-ins with inmates in the protective custody unit who wanted to seek revenge upon Jake for what he had done for kidnapping Jamie Claus but also for killing her parents see people like Jake Patterson are not loved by anyone in the prison system or in the general population or out here in society people don't like Jake Patterson Jake Patterson is a weasel of a little man who is never going to amount to anything in his life and especially now that he's incarcerated and will die there at the at the correction center in New Mexico Jake Patterson a failed individual on so many different levels he's going to die there and he will never get a trade he will never finish any kind of education because they do not offer any kind of higher education at New Mexico State Penitentiary he can take the classes if he wants on his own if he comes up with the money to pay for him on his own but they don't offer anything for free at New Mexico State Penitentiary so Jake has had several run-ins and there is a video online where you can watch Jake get his ass kicked by another inmate there have been other incidents that have happened since Jake has been there he has been blackmailed extorted he has been beat up he has been assaulted and yes on two occasions someone physically harmed him to the point where he needed medical attention it may not make the mainstream media that again a lot of what happens inside of prisons don't make mainstream media because a lot of people assume once someone has been arrested and convicted of a crime and we send them away to prison the story is over at that point not all inmates but most so Jamie Kloss she survived she is the hero of her own story Jamie Kloss is now living the best life that she can she went back to school and she is trying to put some resemblance of a natural normal life to you know back together she's back with her dog that she loves so much she's doing what she can and and trying to help others as well she has volunteered through the Elizabeth smart program to help other victims of crime and to help them and coach them and talk with them through an online network through zoom in particularly since the COVID you know shutdown has happened but she's doing the best she can and all she wants now is to be left alone 
just let me live my life. Let me be me. And I respect that. I respect that immensely. And I respect the courage and you know the, the fortitude that she has in her life to not make this be the reason to hold her back. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is where Jake Patterson is in prison, doing two life terms back to back. On top of that, 30 years. And Jamie Kloss is living her life. She's doing the best that she can, enjoying her time with her family and friends and her little doggy. And that's all that Jamie wants right now. And Jamie, I wish the best for you and for your family. And thank you, everyone, for joining me today. You have a terrific weekend. Stay safe out there.